Yo gang, welcome back to the kitchen YouTube. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button with that bell so that you can be notified when we're making these busting dishes. And also if you like hunting, gun reviews, and just everything, we do it all here. But today we are gonna talk about this Italian herb crusted salmon. It's super simple, not many ingredients, and it is really, really good. Don't go far, we are gonna get started. All right. Got my hands washed and right here we have about two a two pound fillet of salmon it depends on how big your family is how it would determine the size of the fillet that you get um leftovers lunch whatever for the next day is always good all right so that's that um you are going to need some foil paper and a cookie sheet so what we're going to do is First thing, we're gonna line the cookie sheet with the foil paper. All right, and to accompany this, we are gonna make some good old mashed potatoes. Now, I don't care what type of potatoes you use, red potatoes, yellow potatoes, um, white potato, Irish potato, whatever. Whatever potatoes you like, you can use. All right, so I know y'all don't need instructions on how to line the um, cookie sheet with some foil paper. Okay, now to this, don't worry about adding any oil or anything to prevent your salmon from sticking because the goal is you want it to stick. Well, yo, why would you want it to stick? Because um, I don't know if anybody else eats the skin off of the salmon, but I don't. So when the skin actually sticks to the sheet, it's so much easier to just scoop the actual flesh right off of the skin when it sticks. That's my choice. Now, if you want to eat the skin, add a little bit of oil to your foil so that it doesn't stick. All right. Oh, shoot. All right, I did say the salmon has been washed and it has been pat dry. When I say washed with just some clear, fresh water, um, make sure that there's no bones hidden in the spine of the fish anywhere, not the spine, in the flesh of the fish, because um, sometimes you'll get a few little bones in there and you just want to make sure that there's no bones. Okay. All right, now, we have our water boiling for our potatoes. We're gonna show the water some love with a little bit of salt. Gonna cover that up and let that get boiling. And the ingredients are so simple. All you're gonna need is some black pepper, some white salt, some Italian seasoning, some minced garlic. I mince my own garlic. Some mayo. Okay. I know, I know. Well, why would you put mayonnaise in the oven? It's going to make you sick. La, la, la. This said in the third. Look, it will not make you sick. If there's any Hispanics on here, we all know arroz imperial, which is imperial rice, is loaded with mayonnaise. <laughs> and we all still living, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. The mayonnaise is what's going to give you the crust on your salmon. Some Parmesan cheese. You can choose to grate your own cheese, which is fine, but I like to use this powdery cheese because I want it to be kind of thick. Um, my consistency on my, um, my spread. And whole milk for potatoes. Sour cream, I put sour cream in my mashed potatoes. And some butter, salted butter. All right, that's it. So, we got our pan ready. And I am just going to transfer my salmon onto my sheet, like that, simple. Okay, now I need to wash my hands so I don't contaminate anything. All right, clean hands. We got our potatoes just in a little bit of water. All right, we have a bowl, 
pre-washed bowl, ladies and gentlemen, and our spatula. Our spatula is to dig out the mayo. Now, I apologize, I don't have exact measurements for this recipe. Y'all know I don't um, have any measurements for anything. I eyeball everything. So depending on the size of your filet, you want to, um, I guess, eyeball it. Because you do want it to be kind of thick on it because you want a nice crust. So, on the salmon. First thing, we're using Hellman's mayonnaise. Okay, how are you guys doing today? I'm not sure what time it is where you are. What are you having for lunch? Where are you watching from? How is your day going? We, okay, we're gonna use all of this. I hate to put just a tiny bit of mayo back in the refrigerator, so we're just gonna use it all. All right, so we have our mayo. We are gonna add our Italian seasoning. I can give you a, an estimate of how much of this to use. Let me see, this is my palm. So we're going to do a heaping palmful. Parmesan cheese. Okay. If I can get it open. There we go. Um, say, how many ounces is this? This is seven ounces. That was probably about three ounces that I put in there. Okay, let's give it a stir and see how that looks. Looks good already. Okay, see it's not overwhelming. The Italian seasoning is not overwhelming in it. You still want to be able to see um, your mayo pretty good. I need to get a spoon. Give me one second. I need a bit of spoon. I'll be right back. Okay, we have a soup spoon. So we are going to get us about two heaping soup, two heaping soup spoons of garlic. That would probably be uh, four or five cloves of garlic. Okay, you're gonna give it a stir and see if we need more. It's super simple, guys. And it is so good. So, so good. And yes, this can be tasted because there's no egg. There's nothing raw in here that will make you sick. So, of course, like I say, taste your... If you can taste it, go ahead and taste your base of whatever it is that you're cooking um, before you move forward because you hate to get to the end and ugh, realize it don't taste like none. We season our food over here on this channel. Okay. Um, let me see. Very good. Okay. So in this mixture, we have Italian dress, Italian dressing, Italian seasoning, minced garlic, Parmesan cheese. It can be shredded or it can be um, powder form. And when I say powder form, this is what I mean. Powder form and mayo. That is it. If you like Miracle Whip, you don't like mayonnaise, I can't tell you how it will turn out with the Miracle Whip because Miracle Whip is kind of sweet. Um, but I'm sure it's not too much of a difference. Um, my oven is preheated at 400 degrees. We have our water boiling for our potatoes. So you want kind of want to get everything going at the same time so everything can finish around the same time. All right, so that's that. Let me wash my hands 
and we'll be right back. All right, so we want to season our fish now. Um, there's no salt or anything in here. The only thing in here is Italian seasoning. So we want to season our fish with some salt and pepper. Some pepper down. And some salt. Let me put this in my hand for somebody stroke out on me on the damn, oh, excuse me, in the comments. Some salt. Make sure you cover it evenly. Because this is your seasoning now. Salt and pepper. That's it. All right. Now, we are going to add our, would this be the crust or our topping? I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Now, do not, if you're going to use the spatula that you mix with to actually smear it on and it touches the fish, do not put it back in your bowl. Just in case you have a lot left over, you can actually put it in the refrigerator and save it um, for another dish. So if you notice your spatula, your spoon, whatever touches the fish, please do not put your spatula back into it. All right, so you're going to add that to your salmon. Now this is gonna give us the crust like I told you before. I'm gonna use the spoon that I used to um, dish out the garlic with. So you want to get it kind of thick on your fish. And I'm sure you can use any type of fish you'd like. If you don't like salmon, you can use a white fish or shoot, well, no, I wouldn't say chicken because chicken takes longer to cook than fish. And this is probably gonna get brown fairly quickly before your chicken is actually done. Okay, so spread all that goodness all over your salmon. Take it down on the sides. Like so. Y'all, this is super simple. And not only is it simple, all you need is 27 minutes in the oven at 400 degrees and y'all will be eating. Yes, dinner is served. All right, I got a little open space right here. We're gonna add a little bit there. I'm gonna put a little bit more right here in this corner. All right, there's an art to this cooking make it fun you know bring your kids in the kitchen your bae whoever bring them in the kitchen with you and make it fun I enjoy cooking a lot but I don't want nobody in the kitchen with me let me do this let me handle this <laughs> okay Let's get into that. this is how you want it to look very simple. I'm not going to add any garnishes or anything on the top because I don't want it to burn. You can put it on after the fact. You can add your parsley and all that for looks. Perfectly okay. But right now is not the time for it because you do not want it to burn. So we're going to put this in the oven. And we'll be right back. All right. 400 degrees. She's going in. Twenty-seven minutes. Simple. We're gonna set our timer. You gonna set our timer? <laughs> yes, I'm using the timer on the microwave. It's okay. All right. Our water is ready for our potatoes. Our water is salted. And let me grab the potatoes. 
All right, so I got rid of the water that the potatoes were sitting in. I'm going to add, carefully add my potatoes to my water. Whatever it takes. If you're brave to just dump it in there, be my guest. <laughs> All right, I like to cut my potatoes the long way. Oi, see? Whoa. When I say the long way, or this would be the short way, so that when I check my potatoes, I can stick it right in the center and make sure that they're done. It's a lot of water. Did a potato fall down? No. All right, if you're just now joining, we are making Italian crusted, Italian, I don't know. I don't even have a name for this. Italian herb crusted salmon. Does that sound good? Yes, Italian herb crusted salmon with a bed of mashed potatoes. That is what we will be making today. Very simple. Just a few ingredients, and I got too much water in here. Okay, I'm gonna have to get rid of some of this water. Give me one second and I will be right back. Okay, water was kind of splashing out. Let's clean that up. All right, you don't need much water. Just to cover your potatoes is enough. The water is salted. And we are going to let them go for about 12 minutes because we are making mashed potatoes so that you can boil them until they're falling apart. You don't want to boil them to the point to where um, when you put them in the strainer, it's kind of breaking up in the strainer. We don't want to go that far. But yes, you want to boil them, boil them till they're good and tender so you can get you a nice smooth consistency without using a mixer on your potatoes. So about 12 minutes and that should be good. We have 21 minutes left on our um, salmon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean up and when we come back we'll probably be dealing with the potatoes first so don't go far. Okay our timer just went off and let's do a quick potato check. All right our potatoes are quite soft. Let me give this oh just a little bit more time while I get my salmon out of the oven. Let's turn this off. Let's get suited up. This is hot. All right, so that was 27 minutes. Look at that. Oh, I wish I could smell it. How beautiful is that? Mmm. There, because that is very hot. Close our oven. Wow, we give the potatoes an extra um, two or three minutes. We're gonna let our fish cool. No, let's go ahead and take these out now. No, this one's not quite. Okay, had I cut them up smaller, we probably would have been finished well before the fish. Um, I did say 12 minutes. I meant like 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. Um, ouch. So, let me see. Yeah, they're breaking up pretty well. I'm not going to shock them with any cold water or anything because I want them to stay very hot because it has to melt my butter and all that stuff. So, give me one second. Let me throw this water off. And when we come back, we'll just have a pot with potatoes. We'll be back. All right, listen, trust me on this. If you clean as you go, your food will taste a whole lot better. The stove is still kind of hot, and I had a, some splashes here on the stove. So I just want to get that up. And once the eye, the eye cools off, I can get that off. The water was salty, so it did leave some stuff on there. Okay, my potatoes are draining. 
this is still pretty hot but I want to keep the heat so I'm gonna bring my potatoes back to the pot and we're gonna make some mashed potatoes all right super simple the stove is still warm I am going to all right this is five pounds of potatoes so this is a whole bag as you can hear the stove is still hot I'm gonna put one stick of butter That is salted butter. Uh -oh. Did all that paper come off? Yeah. And our potato masher. And we are just going to incorporate the butter into the potatoes as we mash. Mash it, mash it, mash it. Now, you can do this many different ways. You can mash it before you add your milk and your sour cream. You can actually get a um, mixer and mix it if you want extra, extra smooth. But I'm going to show you how smooth we're going to get these potatoes. Oh, that's hot. Um, without a mixer. Okay, so you're just going to keep mashing. All we have in here is butter. Okay. Try to get it as smooth as possible. Our salmon is cooling. We have our potatoes mashed. I am going to add a little bit of salt. Let me put it in my hand so y'all can see. A little bit of salt. We're going to salt our potatoes. Um, now, if you want to get jazzy and fancy with it, you can add you some garlic. You can add a little bit of bouillon. Whatever it is you want, you can add to it. It's perfectly okay. Like I tell you all the time, none of these recipes are set in stone. If you add something to it, let me know what you add, what you added and how it was. All right, so milk. We are gonna gradually add in our milk because we don't want runny potatoes. We want dinner potatoes. You're probably saying, Yo, what? what do you mean dinner potatoes? My grandma, in the Bahamas we eat grits, um, a lot of people, yes, no sugar in grits. <laughs> so we make peas and grits in place of peas and rice. And um, <laughs> so when you're cooking dinner grits, which would be like the peas and grits for dinner, you don't want it to be runny. You want it to be more firm. So it's a dinner, um, your, your start for your dinner. If you're eating it for breakfast, it can be a little more runny because you're going to add your cheese and, and all that stuff, which is fine. But to each his own, no sugar in grits. <laughs> um, however it is that you um, want your potatoes to be. All right. So that was a tiny bit of milk to five pounds of potato. Tiny bit because I am going to add sour cream. This is gonna set it off, literally. Let me see if I can fix that. All right, this is 14 ounces. So we're gonna put about seven ounces in here, half. We gonna hit it up with a little black pepper too. Salt and pepper will do wonders with your food. Let me get my handy dandy spatula. Y'all know I love this tool. All right, see how smooth that is? Very smooth. I'll put this on right here. I don't need it right now. But we can, well, yeah, let me use that. We're gonna come back to the smasher in a minute, but I wanna incorporate my sour cream without making a big mess. 
Okay, we're gonna mix and mix and mix. Mix that in. Keep mixing. Nice and smooth. Now, depending on how thick or thin you would like your potatoes, just hit it up with a splash. Trust me, go slowly because whatever you put in, if you put in too much, you can't take it out. So you want to take your time. Why do we want to take our time, y'all? What do I say? Good food ain't fast and fast food ain't good. Yeah. So we're going to taste. Let me grab a spoon. We'll be right back. All right, we just talked about tasting your food and make sure it tastes like something. It needs more salt. So I got another little pinch of salt that I'm going to add to it because I want my food to taste. Stir that in. You can use, you could have used heavy cream instead of whole milk. Just as good. I chose whole milk because I'm using sour cream. But whatever it is that you like, you can put in there. And if you added something or made something different or made some changes, let me know what it is that you did so I can try it too. I am open to all suggestions except my Jiffy cornbread suggestions because I enjoy my Jiffy cornbread um, dressing. All right, so let me get a plate. Let me get a spatula. We're gonna start to plate this beautiful meal and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna get us a dollop of mashed potatoes. Nice and centered. The reason why I didn't make the mashed potatoes so fancy is because the salmon already has enough going on with it and I don't want to overpower any of my flavors with something being too much or, you know, so we just want a nice balance. Now, let me show y'all exactly what I meant when I said you don't have to grease. Oh, that was not even. All right. You don't have to grease the foil. There's plenty oil on the foil that yields from the salmon. All right. And it will scoop right off of the skin. See that? Mm, 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 mm. And the only thing left behind here is the skin that is stuck to the pan. See here? And now all you gotta do for cleanup, you're gonna take your foil, ball it up, and put it in the trash. Super easy. Mm. But let's take a look at this. Look how flaky that salmon is. 27 minutes in the oven. Yeah, I know I'm ready to eat. Okay, this is my Italian herb crusted salmon on a bed of mashed potatoes. Let's take our first bite. It's hot. Look at that bad boy steaming. Put this in your mouth, it's gonna stick. <laughs> it's gonna burn. <laughs> I know I should have had a vegetable. I would pair it with either squash and zucchini, yellow squash, green zucchini, broccoli, a side salad, but this is what we eat today. Mm. Wow, you guys. Mm, 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 mm. that is good that is very good and it's so simple simple mm. 
Yo gang, I hope you try it. If you do, let me know because this is a delicious, super fast recipe. The kids will love it. Trust me when I tell you the kids will love it. Well, thank you guys for joining me on this episode of Cooking with Yolk. I really appreciate it. I love, hey, I should have said this earlier. Y'all please be aware of the scam, scammer pages, please. I had some, you know, so many people inboxing me on um, IG telling me, hey, yo, they got me. Um, I sent them some money. I, whatever it is, please don't. I will never ask y'all for anything. Please do not send nobody any money. My name and my comments are in a gray bubble or with a gray check mark by it. Please do not respond to any of them. I'm begging y'all. I can't, I wish I can protect everybody, but I can't protect everybody when it comes to that. Now, thank you guys for joining me. I love y'all for life. Like y'all already know. I'm sorry. I gotta let you go. Peace.